Hi, this is Julie, and in this video, I'm going to discuss branching in C++, or otherwise known as if statements. So, I'm going to talk about variations of if and if else statements, and then how we can nest if statements inside of each other. Well, first, let's just talk about what branching is. Without branching, our programs start at the beginning and each line of code is executed one after another from top to bottom. But sometimes we want to look at a value and decide to do something based on that data value. And that's where branching comes in. So we're going to allow our programs to make decisions. And we can do that by examining a variable's data value. What is the value of a particular variable? If it meets a condition, then we'll do something because of that, or we may skip that item. For example, we can look at somebody's age and compare that age to 65. If the age is greater than or equal to 65, then we'll print senior citizen. Otherwise, we won't. Or, if we have a number like quantity, we can compare that to 10. And if it's greater than 10, we can calculate a discount. In both of these scenarios, we have an expression where we're comparing one thing to another. And that expression is either going to be true or false. So let's see an example with a flow chart. With this problem, I want to decide if I need a coat. So in the flow chart, after start, I go to the diamond shape where it says temp less than 50. And this is my decision point where I'm trying to decide if I want to branch to the right or go down. If it's true that the temperature is less than 50, then I'm going to branch to the right and get a coat. But if it wasn't true, then I'm just going to go outside. If I do get a coat, once I get the coat, I'll go outside. So I'm going to go outside whether or not I get the coat. The question is, am I going to get a coat first? Now here's how we can write that same problem in pseudocode. If the temperature is less than 50, get a coat. And I indented get a coat because I'm only doing that if that condition is true. And then I will go outside regardless of whether the temperature was less than 50 or not. So what does that look like in C++ code? I'm going to create a variable called temp of type double. And I'm going to make it a double because it's a measurement. And measurements can have decimal values or fractional values. So like the other numbers, temperatures could have a decimal. And then I'm going to display a prompt asking the user to enter a temp and get that number from the user. So at this point, I haven't done anything different from what I've done before. But now I'm going to set up my branching. I'm going to look at that temperature with this if statement. And I write it by putting if, and then in parentheses, I put the expression that I'm trying to evaluate. Is the temperature less than 50? That's what I'm putting in the parentheses. I'm comparing variable temp to the integer literal 50. And if that expression is true, then I will execute the next line of code that says get code. When I'm finished with that entire statement, then I'll go to the next line of code that says go outside. And I'm going to go to that line of code whether or not I did the get coat line. So let's see some examples of that program with some data. So again, here's my prompt where I'm asking for the user to enter the temperature and the code that I'm writing to evaluate the temperature 
compare it to 50 and either get a coat or don't get a coat. And then finally, follow that up with go outside. So if I were to run the program with the number 40, when I go to the if statement, I'm going to compare 40 to 50. 40 is less than 50, so that's true. And I will display get coat. Then I will display go outside. If I run the program with a temperature of 70, then I'm going to compare 70 to 50. It's not less than 50. So that expression is false, the expression in the parentheses. And I'm going to skip over the line that says get coat and jump down to the line that says go outside. Now with that example, if the temperature was greater than 50, we didn't do anything special. But sometimes we want to do either or. We want to do one thing or another, like calculating the price of a ticket. So I could have a situation where everyone who is age 65 and older is going to pay one price and everyone else is going to pay a different price. So in my flowchart, the first thing I'm doing is I'm at the diamond decision shape and I'm going to compare the age to 65. If that is true, if the age is greater than or equal to 65, I'm going to branch to the right and set price to 8. If it's false, then I'm going to go down to price equal 10. After I set the price to either 10 or 8, then I'm going to go to the line that says you owe price or that process. And that process is going to execute regardless of which price I set. So let's see this one in code. In this example, I have two variables. I'm going to use an integer for age because we usually don't talk about somebody being say 43.6 years old. And then I'm going to have a double for the price so that we can have dollars and cents. I'm going to prompt the user to enter an age and get that age from the user. Now I'm going to compare age to 65. Is age greater than or equal to 65? If it's true, price is going to be 8. Now, if I want to do something when it's false, I'm going to use an else. And the next line will only be executed if the condition was false. So in this case, if the age was not greater than or equal to 65, I want to go to the else and set the price to 10. And then finally, I'm going to display the price. And I'm displaying that price whether or not I set it to 8 or 10. In both of these examples, I have indented the line of code that follows the if and the else. And that indentation helps me when I read the code to understand what's happening. The compiler does not care about these indentations at all. Sometimes when I have a condition, I will want to execute more than one line of code. And when I want to do that, I need to set that code in a code block by enclosing it in curly braces. That way the compiler knows that all of the statements between the two braces should be executed when the condition's true. So in this example, when age is greater than or equal to 65, and that's true, I'm going to execute price equal 8 and I'm going to display senior price. If that condition is false, where the age is less than 65, I want to execute the code after the else. And again, because I want to execute more than one line of code, I'm going to enclose it in a code block using the curly braces. I'll execute two lines of code here, price equal 10 and I'll display regular price.
Now, I'm not limited to just an if and an else and two possibilities. I can further extend my if statement by chaining together a series of else ifs in the middle. So in this example, now I have three prices. I have a price for seniors where age is greater than or equal to 65. I have a child price if the age is less than 10. And then for everyone else, I have a regular price. And again, in each one of these, I'm going to use a code block to specify which lines of code should be executed when that condition is true. So where the beginning looks just like it did before where I say if age greater than or equal to 65 in parentheses. When I get to the end of that code block for the true condition, instead of saying else, I'm going to put an if in there as well because now I have a second condition to look at, if age is less than 10. And I'm only going to look at this condition if the age had not been greater than or greater than or equal to 65. So now I'm checking a second condition or looking at a second expression. And if age less than 10 is true, then I'm going to execute the code in the code block where I set the price to five and I display child price. Now, if that condition were false, then I'm going to come to the else. I don't have another if, so in this case, I will always execute what's in the else if I hadn't executed one of the other two code blocks. So what I've created here is a situation where I'm going to execute one of three code blocks depending on two different conditions. Now sometimes we're going to put an if statement inside of another if statement. We may only want to look at this if statement if the other if statement had been true or if it had been false. So I'm trying to determine here what bonus level to give an employee. And if the employee had more than $50,000 of sales, then they're eligible for a bonus. But what bonus do I want to give them? So now I'm going to look at the sales again. And if the sales was greater than $70,000, I'm going to set the bonus to $3,000. But if it hadn't been, then the bonus will be $1,000. So basically, they'll get a bonus of $1,000 if the sales were between $50,000 and $69,999. Now, if the first condition had been false, maybe the sales were $45,000, we wouldn't even look at that second if statement. We'd just jump down to where it says else, and we would assign bonus to zero, or assign zero to the variable bonus. Now, particularly in this statement, the indentations are necessary for readability. Again, the compiler doesn't care. I could line every one of these statements up on the left margin and the compiler would be just fine. But for me as an individual trying to read the code, it would be really hard to understand what's going on. Also, when you're nesting if statements, you can take these very deep and it can get very confusing and hard to debug. So in general, a rule of thumb is don't nest these more than three levels deep. Once you've gotten to your third if statement, you really don't want to add another one or it's getting too complex and confusing. And then you probably want to do something else like use functions or some other solution. So to summarize what we talked about here, we can have an if statement without an else. The else is not required. Whenever we want to execute multiple statements in a condition, we need to enclose them in curly braces. And then if we want to have multiple tests, we can use if, else if, else if, else if, and so on and so on and so forth ending with an else so that we can have multiple tests. 
And the final thing we looked at is if we want to have a test inside a test, then we can use nested statements.